Hey everyone, it's David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic again. I've got another video for you. Uh, this is actually a three-part series on a Ram 45 and 5500 series truck. I want to show you step-by-step -step how to remove the rear brake rotor and hub assembly. I'm going to show you what special tools are recommended and also what the recommended torques are for certain things. I'm also going to give you some little pointers along the line, uh, along the way of things I recommend doing. And you also will probably hear me repeat myself throughout the video, but like I said, the best way to learn is through repetition. So uh, watch all the way through the video. At the end, I'll give you um, some more stuff about the special tools as well as the uh, actual torque as well. So I'll mention it throughout the video and then I'll actually give you some uh, visuals on that as well. So you go ahead and get comfortable and you get ready to watch me work on this heavy, heavy, yes, I'm just heavy rear rotor assembly. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to get the vehicle jacked up. Once we get jacked up and these tires are off the ground, I'm going to go ahead and take, there's a total of 10 of them, and they're 7 8 is what you're going to be using, a 7 8 socket, and you're going to take a total of 10 lug nuts off. Now, what you're going to probably find from time to time is these little wheels do not want to come off. They may be rusted in place on the hub. You may have to spray down some PB Blaster, WD-40, let it sit. You may have to try to pry from the back. You may have to try to move it with your hand. Sometimes you can get the outside off easily and have to fight the inside. So, right, so we had no real problem getting the outer one off. It just came right off. Now the inner one's the one we're going to have some issues with. She's kind of stuck. She won't move no matter what I do. So what I'm going to do as far as use my hands, spray everything down, a little PB blaster, get in the little lug where the studs come through. Kind of let it soak for a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to go do something else. But when I come back, I'll try to get it off. And if that don't work, I'm going to get on the back side and try to pry between them. What I usually use is try to get behind the rotor. When you get between the rotor and the rim of a long pry bar, you just kind of work it a little bit, turn it, work it, turn it, do the same thing. Then you'll start hearing some snapping noises where it's finally actually starting to break loose and just work it till you get it all the way off the lip. Then when you go back with it, it probably wouldn't hurt to put some kind of anti-seize if you can get your hands on some or at least a little wheel bearing grease, anything to kind of keep it lubed up in there. Now I know I said I wasn't going to show you me trying to pry the tire off because it was kind of a waste of time, but actually I don't really think it is because one thing I don't like to see people doing is they kind of beat on the rim right here with a hammer, large hammer. When you start denting it up, you're going to start throwing the balance off. I don't, and plus I don't want to be doing any damage to a rim, especially on something this, that weighs as much. And what I do is I usually get my pry bar and I get on there. You probably can't get all the way through the rim to the back of the rotor, but I get about halfway. In between where the, the vents are and I kind of just gently start prying. I work it around. Just take your time. She'll start moving. But it's gonna take a lot of effort. There you go. You can actually watch it move right there. Just keep going around. You're gonna start breaking it loose more and more. Now it may have a tendency to kind of rock back in place as you're doing it but just walk it around like that. You know use some beating on it with a hammer. The more you do it, the more it's going to come off to where finally you have access to everything. So now I'm going to go ahead and start finish doing this. And you get ready to watch me take that axle off. At this point, I want to get a catch pan and put up under where the axle is going to be coming out because we're going to lose some axle fluid coming out, so we don't need it dripping everywhere. Now we got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 15 millimeter bolts that hold that, that axle to the hub. flange on this axle to this hub is still just an o-ring shouldn't take it no more than just a couple gentle taps there we go now it's ready just to slide out and this is going to actually disengage the hub from the uh, ring and pinion inside it's 
So now we got access to get to the nut. Now that'd be a little further down when we get to that as far as steps. What we need to do is we need to get the brake caliper, brake caliper mount off so that nothing's actually holding the rotor in place and we can worry about getting the nut off as well as the outer bearing. Now when we get ready to take this caliper off, now here's what we got. Take the caliper off from its mount. Uh, you got two 15 millimeter bolts, one here, one a little further up here out of view, and one up here. Now we got to get those loose. Sometimes the uh, caliper mounts themselves, the bushings and the slides actually start spinning while you're holding, trying to take the 15 off. If that's the case, just get you something to hold on to it right here. It's got a hex head. I just use a pair of uh, slip joint pliers and get you 15. And then you can go ahead and pry back the piston slightly, sit this caliper out of the way, somewhere where it's not hanging by the brake line because you don't want to do any damage to the line, and sit it to the side. And then the mount itself is held on with two really, really huge bolts. They're one and three sixteenths. Uh, you can use a socket on the bottom one, but the upper one is up here between the caliper and the leaf spring, so there's no room for a socket. You'll be using a wrench for that and you're probably going to need a couple wrenches, anything to give you some leverage because it is extremely tight. Like I said, bottom one you can get with a socket. Upper one you're going to be doing by hand, so uh, take care when you're trying to get those off. Now, what I did is I actually, of all places to go find one, um, Lowe's sells a cobalt one and three sixteenths wrench. I was able to go pick one up from there and that's what I'm using. So that's what you're going to need. If you don't have one, you're never going to get it off without it because of that clearance issue at the top.